One. Well, the previous frame, John looked a certainty, didn't get a snooker, and, uh, well, Barry Hawkins had a terrific break of 58 to pinch the frame. Oh, he's let this chance slip. And John Higgins, well, couldn't wait to jump out of his seat. I think they're just going to lift the, uh, the curtain in the middle, or the magic wall. There it goes up into the heavens of the crucible. One. Yes, yeah, so that's all the other side of the arena can see this, but I don't think, I think they're going to see many shots now because John Higgins will be mighty relieved, I feel, here to only be one frame behind in coming into the final session this evening because he's, he's looked anything but... Confident, Six. he's looked a little bit edgy. His safety play hasn't been great. Okay, he's had chances, but they seem to be coming off the mistakes of Barry Hawkins rather than ones he's made himself. And that's always a worrying sign, sign, isn't it, Dennis? When you're relying on your opponent's mistakes. It's going to be all to play for this evening. 14. Fifteen. He'll call on all his experience. And three times a champion here at the Crucible. So he's been through every scenario here. Twenty. Barry Hawkins has yet to get past the first round here at the Crucible. This is his fifth visit. He's put himself in a position where he could knock out the defending champion, but it's going to be a tall order this evening. Forty-two. Well, I think of the two 44. players, John Higgins may be the more happier with the outcome. Not the way he's played, I'm not saying anything about that, but just 44. the fact that he's not dropped further behind than only one frame. And that will be the scoreline. Barry Hawkins has done well, missed opportunities against the defending champion, but he'll take a one-frame lead into the final session to the finish tonight. And as is always the case, it's the defending champion who gets to play his match to a conclusion on the opening day. And uh, John Higgins certainly had his work cut out for him early on in that particular session, John, didn't he? Yeah, I was talking to his father upstairs in the, in the lounge before he played, and he's just saying that he couldn't remember John being as nervous. You know, it wasn't just the day before, it was two days before. And I think it's that, you know, the mantle of trying to come back and, and retain your title is probably uh, weighing heavy on his shoulders at the minute. He didn't really settle down, and he's up against a very, very good player. Admittedly, somebody who's yet to win a match at the Crucible, which is hard to believe when Barry's as good as he is. How heavy is the load of carrying the defence of the, of the title, Steve? Because when we look back in history here at the Crucible, only two men have come back the next year to successfully defend a title, you and Stephen Hendry, but it hasn't been done since the 80s. No, I think it's easier when you've won it a few times to defend it again, but you know, if you've won it for the first ever time in your career, to defend it is, is a nightmare. You come back, you're all over the place. So John Higgins is probably better set up to defend it this year but if we look at the history books over the last two or three years it's not, it's not often players do defend titles successfully not often these days you get multiple winners of events during a season so the problem is there are so many good players around just the numbers game is yes. tough to beat but if anybody can do it John Higgins and the style of play John Higgins produces can do it 
Now, that's not to discount the chances, of course, of Barry Hawkins, because as we said earlier on, in five years, he's yet to win a match here, which seems amazing considering how much talent this fellow actually has. Yeah, when he came through, he got, he got a draw one year, I think it was with Ken first round, and everyone thought, what a horrible draw for Ken, that's a great, you know, it's going to be really difficult playing. And Ken won something like 10 1, and he never really produced his, his best form. So it is a little bit strange. It's one of those ones that you, it's like you want to get the monkey off your back. You want to come here, win a match, and then hopefully progress. But unfortunately for him, the draw came out playing John Higgins, which is tough in itself. So once again, he's got the problem. Can he win that first round and get over it and then hopefully settle down at the Crucible? From what you've seen, Steve, is he, is he in a good place to go, to go forward tonight? Yeah, he looks a handful all of a sudden, and I think you know, some players need a few sort of chances uh, at the Crucible to get over the, the intensity of the event, and I think perhaps that's what happens. It could be luck that you don't get off to a good start in matches and all of a sudden you get this problem with a venue, but the Crucible Theatre is a different style of event and, and it's a completely different playing arena than anything else we play in. But it looks this year as if he's very focused. It looks like he's playing excellently as well, cueing beautifully, knocking the long ones in with a, a, a short crack at the back of the pocket. So John Higgins has definitely got his work cut out tonight. Yeah, he has indeed. OK, well, uh, that's a concluding session you will see a little bit later on. But at 10 o'clock this morning, another two players came out for their first round match. Mark Allen is playing at Tom Ford, who's uh, a debutant, 26-year-old from Leicester, ranked 49 in the world. Mark Allen, of course, reached the semi-final here last year before succumbing to John Higgins. But Alan was in a big hurry this morning. He raced to a 7-0 lead. Uh, Tom Ford avoided the whitewash with a century to go 7-1 behind. There's only been one whitewash at the Crucible. That was our John Parrott, who didn't give uh, Eddie Charlton a look in in the first round one year. Let's see, shall we, how this session finished up. This is the ninth frame of it. <laughs> 